I guess this was planned properly. <laughs> and 11 BS was taken, so I had to add a couple of S's. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to talk about Wi-Fi 7 data rates. Uh, all of my presentation is based on the uh, BE uh, draft, so it's more uh, relevant to call it uh, 11B data rate or EHT, if you like the, uh, the acronyms. So when, uh, when, we looked at, when we started to look at HE and the number of data rates we had with Wi-Fi 6, we ended up with like 2,000-something data rates. The new number with EHT is 10,800, right? <laughs> so that's the total number of data rates. And if we look at the entire MCS table, inc that includes everything, this is what we get. And uh, <laughs> I know, it's kind of crazy. And then at, you know, at the end, I'll, I'll kind of show you what uh, we can expect to see in the real world. Uh, but all the red is the new stuff, if you want. So what is new in EHT that impacts the data rates? We pretty much have two things that will kind of, um, you know, directly impact us. We have the new, a new channel width, or I guess a couple of new channel width. We have the 320 megahertz wide channels, and we have the MRUs, right, that David talked about yesterday a little bit. So we'll talk about that. We also have the new modulation technique. We have the 4K QAM. And then if you look at the draft, they also introduced a couple more MCS index in there that I'll talk about. Oh, and I forgot the spatial streams. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> we'll talk about the spatial streams too briefly, up to 16. And then they introduced a couple of MCS indexes, and they have something called MCS 14 and MCS 15. So we'll talk about this and see if it's going to impact our lives for the better or for the worse, I guess we'll see. So new channel width. So you guys know we've talked about this for a long time. We have 320 megahertz wide channels. How does that impact data rates? Well, you know, we, we subdivide our channels in subcarriers or tones. Um, and so if we have a larger channels, we have more tones, right? So in the 320 megahertz wide channels, we have 3,920 subcarriers we can actually send data on. So if we have more tones, we can just send more data. It's uh, pretty much uh, straightforward here. So larger channels will give us larger day rates. And then we have the MRUs, right? The multiple resource units. So if we go back to HE and we look at the 20 megahertz wide channel, and if we look at you know, the way the standard kind of divided this uh, for us, we could actually divide it into 26 tones or uh, 52 tones are used, uh, and this was defined in the standard. So they will tell you, you know, you can kind of divide it in this way, but you had to choose between a 52 or a 26. Now with the multiple RUs, what you can do is you can actually use adjacent uh, resource units and combine them together uh, to get a little bit of a wider road, I guess, to transmit on. Um, and then they also define this in the standards, right? These, this one is the real example for the, from the standard. They show you how you can actually divide your 20 megahertz wide channels into the, the different MR, MRUs. And just like David said yesterday, they have two types of MRUs. They have the small size MRUs for OFDMA transmissions. So this is intended to be used in a smaller channel. They have the 52 plus 26 and the 106 plus 26 tones. And then they have the large size MRUs. These are for OFDM transmissions. And you know, here are the details if you want to look at it. But it's pretty much different blocks of 20 megahertz that you can combine together to get a, a larger channels, right? So what does this mean for data rates, right? If you guys have familiar with the MCS table, this pretty much means that we're going to have more columns in the MCS tables because, because we're going to have more channel width, right? So this is the uh, mcsindex.net website. That's actually updated now with the new data rates. Uh, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see you know, the monster. Um, but now you can see you know, the, last, the last three columns are the 320 megahertz wide channel. And then all the other reds, the new columns, are the different MRUs. Okay. 
So that's the first impact we have on the MCS table is we have more columns because of the new channel width. Now, are we going to use the MRUs? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when I start to talk to some people, it doesn't look like we're going to use MRUs, you know, tomorrow. Um, so probably the most impactful for us will be the 320 megahertz wide channel, and that's what we're going to see most likely in a, in a while. Uh, I also added the, um, the number of uh, tones that you have for the different sizes, if you guys want to see this, for the different MRUs. Then we have the modulation. So we have the 4 gig one. We talked about this. How does that impact the data rate? Well, because we have a more complex modulation technique, we can actually pack more bits into our transmission on each subcarrier. We can now do 12 uh, bits per subcarrier. So that's the impact. And then here are the numbers of the number of uh, bits we can send on each of these different channel width. I've excluded the MRUs from these tables because it was just like unreadable. But you have the, let's say the traditional channel width here uh, with the number of uh, bits we'll be able to send on the channels if you combine all of the tones together. We also have the coding. Coding hasn't changed. You know, they're still using three over four or five over six with the new modulation. So that, what, what does impact, uh, uh, how does it impact the, the data rates or the MCS table? It's adding two new indexes, right? Index 12 and 13 uh, corresponds to the 4K QAM modulation. So if I go back to the MCS table, and I'll zoom in a little bit, um, you see you have, the, on the left, you have the 12 and 13 index for each spatial stream. So the, 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 new, the two lines, you see the two red lines you see every time, you have a new spatial stream. These are the MCS 13 and 14. So we'll have new lines inside our MCS table because of the modulation. And then we have the spatial stream discussion. This one was interesting because looking at the draft, the BE drive that I had, um, I couldn't find the 16 number in that document. Right? It's a couple of hundred, or I don't know, a few hundred pages. And I started talking to people, and when you look at the standard, they say they use the NSS for the number of spatial stream, and they talk about one to eight, one to eight, one to eight. And you actually have to go into the meeting notes of the IEEE you know, meetings to actually find someone talking about 16 spatial streams. So um, anyway, 16 spatial stream, um, it's there because we can do the math with it. <laughs> Uh, in reality, I don't think we'll use 16 spatial streams, but you know, I've included it just because it's probably going to be part of the standard document. And then we get to the, the, new, the new stuff, uh, to me anyway. It was new to me. <laughs> uh, but there are a couple of uh, additional indexes that they added into the, uh, the MCS table. And they have the first thing is called DCM, MCS 15. And this one is, uh, they call it frequency diversity. And what they do is instead of coding you know, bits on the one subcarrier, they can actually duplicate it. Uh, so they would duplicate the same type of information across the channel in different tones. And there's like you know, math behind it, so it's not like two tones right to one another. They kind of dispatch it inside the channel. And the idea is to increase the, the resilience of the wireless transmission, right? Um, and so if you, if you look at the math and, and behind the data rate, you can kind of see what type of data rates we could expect from it. So it's adding you know, resilience in the communication. So as a result, we're losing in terms of data rates. So it's, you can see that it's 0.4 data rates if you're using the, uh, uh, the 26 tone RU. And you can also notice that it's only using BPSK. Okay? So it's MCS 15, but it's using BPSK, just like S MCS 0. <laughs> so it's quite interesting how they did this. But it gives you an idea of you know, what it does. And the idea behind this, as, as far as I understood it, is it's more for like um, a single AP deployment. And you want to extend the cell edge for IoT devices that don't need a lot of uh, bandwidth. Then you could use this modulation so you can you know, place a sensor in your, in, your, in your garage and get some data out of it. I'll take Have you an idea if vendors will implement that? No idea. I just read the standard for this. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, they have a couple of limitations. It's only for one spatial stream communications, right? Uh, and then uh, what's the other? It's only single user, right? Which kind of makes sense for the use case. Um, and then they have MCS 14. 
And it's, it's called the duplicate mode, but when you look at it, it's more the, a duplication of a duplication. That's why I put a post with four lights. <laughs> and what they do is, you know, they kind of duplicate an entire channel. So, you know, 996 tone, which would be an 80 megahertz wide transmission, would be kind of two copies of a, of a 40 megahertz wide transmission. But inside that 40 megahertz wide, then guess what they use? They use BPSK DS DCM, so they do a duplication of the data on each of the tones inside that, four, that, that 40 megahertz. So it's kind of like a duplication of duplication. And here, what's interesting with this is if you notice the bandwidth, it's only supported on 80, 160, and 320, and it's only for six gigahertz. So the goal behind this is to use the, um, uh, the power uh, spectrum density, so the extra boost in power we get with PSD, and instead of using it to get similar SNR, we use it to extend the cell edge of our 6 gigahertz signal, and hopefully we can get a wider 6 gigahertz signal for, same thing, single AP deployments for the most case. These are the limitations. So I've updated the MCS index website. You can take a look at it. And what I've done as well is on top of having the full MCS table, if you want to geek out and look at all of the 10,000 day rates, uh, you'll, I also created like a real world MCS table. This is just based on my assumptions, but I think these are the data rates that we will see in the wild. So what I kept in there are just MCS 13 and 12 for the 4K QAM, and I've kept the 320 megahertz wide channel. So this is like a, also, <laughs> I got rid of a lot of spatial streams. So as you can see, I've only kept up to four, sp four spatial streams. Last but not least, David sent me a picture uh, of his fancy OnePlus open uh, phone, Wi-Fi 7 phone. So you can see he got a uh, 7,000, uh, sorry, 5,764 megabits per second data rates, right? So if you go back to the MCS table, he pretty much got the maximum he could get on a 320 megahertz wide channel. Two spatial stream, 4K QAM, so it does work, apparently. Uh, how far away from the AP were you? Five feet. Five feet, okay. And then uh, 0 0.8 now second guard interval. So that's it for me, thank you. <laughs>